part, hopefully. Um, education seems to be the buzzword this morning, and certainly education, I think, is part of uh, the communication process, and certainly it's interactive. It's between uh, the educators and those people that you're attempting to, uh, to get the message across to. So that I'm, I'm a big believer that we need to continue to have peer interaction. I know we looked at, at that within our community, not only at uh, the college campuses level, but we're also working at that at the, at the high school level uh, to have that peer interaction, peers talking to peers. I think that that's been the most effective communication and dealing with the issue of binge drinking and misuse of alcohol. Um, City of La Crosse is getting into Oktoberfest. It's had it for 45 plus years, and we're probably going to have it long into the future. It's my hope we're going to have it long into the future. It's one of our, our heritage festivals here. Um, but I think some of the things that we've done, it's we've handed out buttons with, from the police department, be on your best at Oktoberfest. Um, certainly the Tavern League is, has gone out with the message, be safe, be responsible. I think the Oktoberfest has advertised a, a, as a family fest. Um, we've seen fest, the Oktoberfest go from 200 arrests on, on opening weekend down to less than 20. So I think we have seen positive change with regard to Oktoberfest, and certainly that doesn't mean that we minimize the risk. We have to continue to be vigilant, and the only way to be vigilant is continue to have that uh, form of education uh, that we are currently uh, engaged in as a community uh, with the issue. We'll start off by just uh, rehashing the last slide, address the negative consequences associated with uh, company high risk drinking. I think we've got to take a more proactive approach to curb this off before it becomes high risk drinking. What is high risk drinking? Just because people are going to the bar, does that mean it's high risk drinking? And binge drinking, I obviously we've got to try to curb binge drinking on young people as well. But like the mayor said, we are going to have Oktoberfest. There are bars in this town. People are going to go out and have a few drinks and during these events. People are going to continue to consume alcohol in our city. And I think we've got to make sure that just because people are drinking, we don't assume that there's high risk there and somebody's going to get in trouble and we've got to cut it off. I think we've really got to look at making sure that people are doing that responsibly and it is safe. When I was 18 years old, I played lacrosse with the UWL club sport while I was in high school. And doing that, I had an opportunity to travel all the different communities in the state and surrounding areas. And I was only 18, so naturally I was a designated driver, driving around a bunch of college kids going to parties and drinking alcohol. So, so I kind of got a good perspective from the get-go, being young, to what the scene is, how people react to law enforcement, what law enforcement attitudes are, how students attitudes are towards law enforcement surrounding community, communities and I think we've just got to make sure that when these kids go out they've got a plan because once you start drinking you got to stick to your plan because when you start drinking obviously things things get a little bit cloudy and you're not always going to stick to what's responsible so we just got to encourage people to go out with a plan and make sure that it's not always high risk just because they're drinking. They just gotta stick to the plan and be responsible. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Once again, I mentioned earlier that I remember the first Oktoberfest, that's when there was an 18-year-old beer law and still wasn't old enough to go to beer again. Not quite as old as I might have sounded the first time. Although it's close. One of the things <coughs> that we've done in the state of Wisconsin, and this was 25 or 30 years ago, I don't remember the exact date, is we changed from the 18-year-old beer laws to a blanket 21-year-old law. And I'm not so sure that that did a real good job because I think when somebody earlier mentioned something that I've said for a long time, we lost the training wheels. And uh, when I go back, I remember a lot more than five beer bars going across. There were, there were a lot of them. So it, it's not the sort of thing that we can fix by any sort of prohibition. It still comes down to one basic thing, personal responsibility. People have to learn this at home, and this learning process for all of us has to be reinforced throughout life, whether this is in the military, in the workforce, on the college campuses. It all has to be a constant, continual learning process. 
And I, I know, for example, that because of my heritage, I've learned that I don't have to, but it isn't bad. So the, the use of alcohol just has to come down to a continual learning process throughout one's whole life. And this area where students have their first real taste in a lot of cases of, of freedom, where they don't have mom and dad watching over them, and that's maybe where the, uh, we have to be extremely cautious in how we approach it. And again, I'm concerned about the time police, so I'll let it go again. Thank you. The history and culture surrounding Oktoberfest is one of celebration and consumption, but it must be made clear to people of all ages that this celebration of harvest is not a lifestyle. There's a lot about our heritage and family involvement that the Oktoberfest brings to the cross, and these positive aspects should be emphasized and encouraged. Recognizing that abuses will occur in any culture of excess will allow us to set forth safeguards in addition to such as have been implemented thus far including making sure everyone is responsible for themselves and their friends. It should also be recognized that even if you do not know someone, it is still your responsibility as an adult to look out for other people. In this fashion, a culture of celebration excess can be pursued while also nurturing a culture of fraternity, perspective, and co-responsibility. This will be a positive common cause to remain alive and growing while minimizing high-risk behavior. I believe there is sufficient concern and involvement by area students and local residents to set forth a special unit of volunteers to assist in identifying and assisting those who display risky behaviors during this once a year celebration. And I would work to make this a reality. One thing is for certain, as the city's largest public celebration, the Oktoberfest is not and should not be expected to go away. Let us deal with it openly and effectively while retaining the best that it can afford for the city, the region, and its citizens. Finally. Thank you. Um, as Oktoberfest has a rich history in the city of La Crosse, I would uh, certainly hope that it continues for a long time. It's very good for our business community as well. But one of the things that we, uh, we should strive to is take a look at Oktoberfest and do we have any students that serve on the Oktoberfest board? I think that by having students serve on that Oktoberfest board, they can bring other areas to uh, help, I guess, with the uh, negative consequences of the Oktoberfest weekend as it is. Uh, I also think that uh, with the Oktoberfest that I first attended um, way back, <laughs> I won't say when, but um, way back when, uh, we haven't done a, we've done, a, I guess, a worse job in the drinking culture with the university starting. Uh, the drinking before they get to the Oktoberfest fair, best ground. Um, it's happening in the dorms, in the apartments, and so on. And why are we promoting Oktoberfest at a start time at 11 o'clock in the morning? That really needs to be addressed, and I'm sure um, people that are on the Oktoberfest board should really take a more positive look at that. Um, I think we need to work better with universities and the communication that um, we are doing with that uh, high level of drinking that weekend. Um, what else did I have here? Um, the high risk of drinking uh, with the negative uh, consequences, I feel that uh, could be addressed with um, the communication and education. And uh, we did. All right. Question number three kind of gets right to the point. Uh, Hi, my name is Ann Miller. I'm a student here at Western Technical College, and I will be graduating this May from the Visual Communication program. And the question I have is, why should students vote for you for mayor? Okay, so why should you vote for me for mayor? 